Hello and welcome to my Silva tutorial. In this tutorial, I will show you how to set up five basic monsters. The construct, the flesher, the robot head, the dive suit and the puppet. I have also made a small testing map for the purpose of this tutorial. The first thing you will notice is the many flag-like icons across the map. These are called path nodes and they are used to determine the path the enemies will take when pursuing the player. They need to cover all the areas where the enemies can move. In order to create a path node you go to areas and then select uh, a path node from the, from the drop menu. But usually after creating one because of bugs it is better to duplicate it instead of creating a new one from that menu by pressing Ctrl D. Path nodes form connect connections to other nearby path nodes but do not form connections to static objects or other kinds of objects that block the way. It's also worth noting that when using stairs it is ad advisable to use a lot of path nodes since monsters can usually get stuck in there. Another useful tip is to use uh, block boxes Another thing that you should consider is to use uh, block boxes to signal the fact that there might be entities which are not static in the way, as the path nodes might not always uh, notice them and will try to form connections between them, and if that happens, monsters will basically try to move through furniture and they will not be able to, and they will get stuck. You might have also noticed the other types of areas that I have added. Most of them are used as locations for monsters, specifically for spawn points or for other places they need to go. This green area here is an agent repel area and when a monster enters it, it will stop chasing the player and it will go to another specified location. In this case it will be this. And this blue area here is a hide area that, in which the player can hide and not be seen by the enemy. The fog area is purely cosmetic. Now, even if we already have the path nodes set up, the monsters won't do anything by themselves if you just put them on the map. Uh, well, most of them anyway, there are a few exceptions. I have also added a button which will trigger a bell sound effect happen here and will alert the monsters to come to that area. And I have scripted five different buttons for e spawning each monster when playing on the map. Now let's take a look at each individual monster. Let's start with the construct. The construct has a very basic AI. There are multiple tabs related to the creature's AI in its entity tab, such as the agent AI, the infected robot state, the barks, the head tracker and the attacker and the listener. The attacker is going to be the most important one. The enemy will be teleported to that specified position after catching the player to specify a position you basically have to specify the name of an area in this case it's monster respawn and it's this area right here so after if it catches the player it will be teleported there then we have another callback that will be called if it damages the player but it usually will not be called since enemies in Soma do not damage you, they trigger an event when they catch you. And then the attacker custom callback, uh, with this we can override the function that happens when the enemy catches you. Like if it is overwritten with a function that only has a debug message in it, then instead of an event happening and the creature knocking out the player, only that uh, debug message will be displayed. Now let's take a look at how we actually set up the construct to patrol around this area and chase the player if it sees him. I have set up a button on this terminal right here and changed its one of its basic callbacks and it is this. I generated its name and then copied it over on the script file inside the class of the map. You can do it right now and it will basically 
give you all the parameters you need if you use the copy function from the editor and then I made this basically if the state of the button is pressed then it will call this function that I have declared separately in the map class and here it is it will enable the entity oh yeah right so uh, in order for so we don't want each entity to be active at the start of the map so we disable them from the general tab by unchecking the active tab and we enable them later via script so in this case it will be enabled when the player presses that button the entity will be enabled it clears the pathfinder track which is basically the set of path nodes it should be patrolling and then it adds these following nodes path node 21 26 30 and 25 which are actual the actual names of the path nodes on the map like uh, 25 21 26 and 30 so so it will be patrolling this square and then we start the patrol by using this command uh, specifying that it's the construct the name of the entity and this val this boolean value if it is true it means that the patrol will be looping if it is false it will only do the patrol once and then stop now let us see it in action i enabled the construct and it started patrolling if the player makes noise or something else, it will take notice and will try to look for the player and attack him. And you can see that after catching the player, the event happened and it was teleported up there. Now I think it will try to get back to its original uh, patrol location and it will use the path nodes to find its way around. Now let's take a look at another enemy, the flesher. The flesher is set up in a very similar way to the construct. You also have to set its, mod its uh, teleport position for it to respawn if it catches the player. And you can also set it on a patrol without any problems. If you do not set a patrol, it will simply stand there and do nothing unless it notices the player. I have used the same commands. This time I used the flesher's name as the entity. A difference here would be that I have used the false argument here, so it will not be looping its patrol. It will go somewhere and then stay. Now let's see this in game. Because of the window, I can freely look at the flesher. In this case, it heard the footstep that I made, so it might try to, to investigate. And the, its patrol ended. By looking it, we will alert it. And we can run and hide in the repel area. It will not be able to follow us here. Now let's take a look at the robot head. The robot head is a bit different to the flesher and the construct because it is made to be a more stationary kind of enemies and it will not be able to patrol. Theoretically it can patrol but it has no animations when doing so, so it would have looked bad, so we won't use that. Because of this, setting up the robot head is very easy. All you have to do is to make the entity active in the script. To do this, we simply use this command. Entity set active robot head true. Now let's test this. We can see that it is there and it is already agitated because we moved. Once again we retreat to the safety of the repel area 
You can try to hide in the hide area, but it might not always work. Yeah, in this case it does not see us. And it will eventually uh, stop searching. Good, now let's take a uh, look at the dive suit. Just like the robot head, the dive suit can be simply activated and do its own AI thing by itself. If it is not set to patrol, then it will simply wander around the patch nodes it can access and look for the player. And if it sees the player, it will attack. Otherwise, you can simply set it to patrol and it will act as uh, it normally would but it will not wander around where you don't want it to go. I think that in-game at Tau it was um, using a patrol, it was simply wandering around. Once again you only have to activate it via script, so only end this set active true. Now let's take a look at the only other enemy left, the proxy. The proxy is a bit more difficult to set up because you cannot simply leave it active without any script because it will simply disappear and not do anything if you do that. First of all, you will need to enter in the puppet state tab and change its aggressive aggression amount to something that's above zero. And you won't need to set its attacker teleport position just yet. You will have to do that through script. There are two ways of implementing the Puppets AI. The default dynamic one and you can also set it to patrol. If it is in its dynamic state, it will go into hiding and despawn and only appear around certain areas if it hears noises the player has made. If it is in a patrol state, it will uh, work as normal. So let's take a look at the code to do this. So in order to set up, set it up, you have to uh, set it as active, and then use this command. You set its attacker position, teleport position to a wild card. It's puppet spawn underline and an asterisk. The asterisk is what makes this um, wild card. It, if it is a wild card, it will take all the areas whose names begin with puppet spawn underline. In this case, it will be puppet spawn underline 1, underline 3, and underline 2. So these are the areas it will be able to spawn in. Technically you could also do this in the editor by using a wildcard there. Now let's see how it looks like in the game. As you can see I am not making any noise, it's still hiding. But if I were to run, it would spawn immediately. We'll start searching for the player based on sounds it can hear. It will eventually despawn and appear again once the player has made some sounds. Now there is something else here I have made for showcasing this. I have made under button. It has this uh, stage change function and when the button is pressed it will create a sound at the, the sound source area and then create an AI sound event at that entity with a range of 100 units and a priority of 5 so that any creatures in this area will hear it. When I press this button, the bell will ring there and they will try to go to it and investigate. So let's see this in action. You can see it's already heard it and it's going to investigate. So this is it, a simple example of how to set up monsters. I will be releasing this on the Steam Workshop and ModDB pages. Hopefully this will help other people make more Soma custom stories. I will probably also be doing a tutorial on how to set up Omnitools in the near future and maybe some other uh, gameplay features. So if there are any other tutorials that you would like to see, be sure to request, I will try to make them if I have free time.